Welcome to RSCH 503, Research Methods and Biostatistics, a three-credit graduate course offered by Drexel University College of Nursing and Health Professions. Research design is the plan and structure of a research program. The design is developed to obtain answers to the investigator's research question or questions. The plan is the overall scheme of research from variables to hypotheses to data collection and to implication of findings. The structure is the framework, organization, paradigm, or model of the relations among variables of the study. What is the best way for a researcher to answer his or her research question? There are three basic considerations to review when answering this question. One, what is the number of subject groups? Two, what is the timing of data collection? And three, is there any researcher intervention? A basic key question to answer regarding research design is, is there an intervention or treatment included in the study? If there is no intervention, then one asks if description of relationships is the purpose of the study. If no, then variables and their characteristics are described, thus descriptive design. If yes, then description of relationships between or among variables is being undertaken, thus correlational design. Next question, is there an intervention? If yes, then one asks if the independent variable is manipulated by the researcher. If no, then the design is quasi-experimental. If yes, then ask if there is a control group. If no, then the design is quasi-experimental. If yes, then ask if subjects are randomly assigned to the control group. If no, then the design is quasi-experimental. If yes, then the design is experimental. There are two purposes to research designs. One, to provide answers to the investigator's research questions. And two, to control variance. The technical function of research design is to control the variance observed in the dependent variable. Variance is controlled by one, maximizing the independent variable's effects on the dependent variable, that is, maximizing treatment variance. 2. Minimizing error factors, and 3. Controlling extraneous or confounding variants. The concepts that are relevant to quantitative research designs include 1. Cause, causality or cause and effect relationships. 2. Multiple causality, that is, two or more variables combined to cause an effect. 3. Probability and prediction, that is, prediction based on probabilities. Four, bias, identification and elimination of possible sources of bias prior to undertaking research. Five, measurement, need for reliable and valid tools of measurement of variables. Six, manipulation, present in interventional research but never in non-interventional research. Seven, control. Control of the effects of possible extraneous variables. Eight, prospective versus retrospective. Terms used to reference timing of data collection. And nine, partitioning. A strategy in which the researcher analyzes the subjects according to a variable that could be considered dichotomous but actually has several different values. Therefore, think of research design as a control mechanism. The statistical principle behind this control me mechanism is the Max-Mincon principle. Max stands for maximizing systematic variance. Min stands for minimizing error variance. Con stands for controlling extraneous variance. First, the max component. Maximizing systematic variance basically means to widen the range of values of research variables through strong manipulations of the independent variables. 
Additionally, the investigator must appropriately select subjects, that is, selection of subjects that are sufficiently different with respect to the study's main variable. Investigators must avoid range restriction. Second, the min component. Error variance is the variability of measures due to random fluctuations whose basic characteristic is that they are self-compensating. There are several determinants to error variance. One determinant is systematic variance, or error emanating from sample subjects, factors associated with individual differences among participants. Another determinant is error of measurement, measurement instruments with poor reliability and validity data. A researcher can minimize error variance by reducing random errors of measurement through the use of standardized procedures, use of reliable and valid instruments, and large samples. A homogeneous sample may reduce error variance related to individual differences. Again, error variance is minimized by reducing error measurement through controlled con experimental conditions and use of instruments with strong reliability and validity data. In an experimental research study, the total variance in the dependent variable is composed of two components. First, the between-group variance and second, the error variance, or total variance in the dependent variable is equal to between group variance, or capital V subscript, subscript B, plus error variance, or capital V subscript E, where V subscript E is the sum of the within group variance and the residual variance. The third or last component of the Max-Mincon principle is control, controlling extraneous variables. The investigator of a study must minimize, nullify, or isolate the influence of these extraneous variables that function as independent variables extraneous to the purpose of the study. To eliminate possible influential independent extraneous variables on a dependent variable, Subjects must be chosen to be as homogeneous on that variable as possible. The downside to this remedy is that a homogeneous sample may risk loss of ability to generalize findings or limits external validity. One technique to control the influence of an extraneous independent variable is to build it right into the study design as an identified independent variable. Such an extraneous independent variable is termed an attribute variable. This achieves control and adds the additional benefit of providing more research information about the effect of the variable on the dependent variable and about, and about its possible interactions with other independent variables. Another technique used to control the influence of an independent extraneous variable is to match participants on that variable. When a matching variable is substantially correlated with a dependent variable, matching as a form of variance control can be valuable. Matching is limited, however, since it is difficult to match on more than two such variables in a uh, sample study. Matching subjects and one on one or two extraneous variables is thus helpful to reduce error. In an experimental design, a subject in an experimental group can be randomly selected and then a subject similar in relation to the extraneous variable or variables can be randomly selected for the control group. These methods add ran randomization control to the matching control. Post hoc analyses are statistical analytics conducted after the primary analyses are completed. Such post hoc analyses add robustness to a study's findings. Conducting subgroup data analysis, or 
disaggregation of subjects based on variables of interest, such as race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, age, and others, mitigates threats to external validity. Recall that investigators use sample data to infer findings to the larger target population of interest on a particular variable. Inference of findings from a sample to a population requires knowledge and skills of descriptive statistics used to describe the sample that are then used to conduct inferential statistics used to understand the target population. For example, the sample's mean on a dependent variable, illustrated as capital letter M, is used to infer to the population's mean on that same dependent variable, or Greek letter mu. An interesting metaphor to understand is the noise to signal metaphor. In this model, x equals a and y equals 5, with 5 serving as the signal. If your data reveals that y equals 5.1, then the residual, that is 5.1 minus 5.0, equals 0 0.1. 0.1 is the residual, or the noise. Noise is the unaccounted for variability in the model. Noise is inevitable. Uncertainty cannot be eliminated from statistical data analysis. However, the probability that y appro approaches mu increases as the sample size, or capital letter N, increases. With the previous information provided, we can now review the criteria for research design. First, does a design chosen answer the research question? The design must effectively answer the specific research question or questions asked. Second, does a design adequately control the independent variable or variables and the extraneous independent variable or variables. Recall the two methods to address this question. First, randomization if possible, and second, control of independent variables to reduce the influence of unwanted systematic variance. This presentation was prepared for graduate nursing students at Drexel University College of Nursing and Health Professions. The primary book used in this research course was The Practice of Nursing Research, Appraisal, Synthesis, and Generation of Evidence. Uh, that is in 2017 edition by Susan K. Grove, Suzanne Sutherland, and S Susan and Jennifer R. Gray. This book is published by Elsevier Saunders. St. Louis, Missouri.